have a tradition of uh, giving our outgoing president uh, engraved cattle, and this is not his first one, and probably won't be his last one, but thank you very much for your service. Thank you very much. the agenda would be to uh, make a motion to nominate the position of Vice President for the Board. Do we have any nominations? I'd like to nominate Bao Min to serve as the Vice President's uh, office. Uh, okay, second. Yeah, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> and the next uh, item on the agenda would be to um, establish the date and time and place of our regular meetings and we've been holding them the uh, first and third Tuesday of each month. Do we have uh, any desire to change that? We have a motion then to uh, continue that practice. So moved. We have a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And I'm assuming the time will stay the same at 7, 7 o'clock. And yes. with two meetings uh, per month. Except for July and August. Okay. And then uh, the next item on the agenda would be the uh, approval of a committee appointment. Um, we need. Uh, each year to select uh, a member to be a representative for the purpose of nominating members to the county committee uh, for the school district organization. Uh, do we have a motion for somebody to fill that position? I'm currently doing it. I'll be happy to continue if somebody wants to make that motion. Dr. West. <laughs> and a second? Second. second. All those in favor 
say aye. Aye. We also need an alternate for that uh, committee. Do we have a motion for that? I'm going to do so as an alternate. Do we have a second for that? I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, I think the organizational part is completed. Uh, at this point, we usually have public comments from the audience. Do we have any cards tonight? Uh, we have several. Okay, our first speaker would be uh, Zamara Martinez. Okay. Come up to the podium, please. <laughs> My name is Samara Martinez. I grew up right around here um, on the border of Santa Ana and Garden Grove. I went to um, Rosita Elementary, James Ellen Intermediate, and I went to Los Amigos, so I'm definitely from around here. This is currently my fourth year at Cal State Long Beach, and as a part of my um, Chicano Latino Studies class, um, 340, with um, Professor Jose Moreno, Bakshi says hi to you, um, Mr. Grant, and um, congratulations on your new position. Um, uh, he did tell me to tell you hello. Um, for my comment today, I just have a suggestion. I was part of my school assignment to come up and speak in front of a board, and based on all the research that we've done in our class, uh, we want to talk about how, um, you know, the, I'm sorry, um, the system has, basically just the way that um, Latinos have not been as able to get ahead in the educational system for several factors, whether it's because of their immigrant backgrounds or um, having trouble with the language. But um, one thing that really stood out um, through our findings and our meetings in class, um, and even just looking up um, by our high school districts, I was looking up at the school on the California Department of Education's website, School of the School District, at, for the year 2006-2007. Um, out of the 1,144 um, graduates, um, there was only 56% of them were able to go on to a college, a four-year either CSU or UC University, as opposed to the 72% um, of, um, of Asians, and um, it was 66% of um, whites. So there's, you know, the gap is there. It's a very big disproportionality. And my suggestion to the board in order to help increase the rate so that everybody can have a better chance towards a fair education would be to implement um, more extracurricular activities throughout the school because extracurricular activities help students become more involved in school, help connect with the campus, and also to um, make the A through G requirements more easily available to all students. Very often people are, or students are tracked into their um, their courses from the third grade, based on the third grade reading scores, and then from the fifth grade reading scores into either honors or um, regular track um, intermediate school. And then from there, when they go into high school, they're not put into AP courses or they're at the intermediate level. And many students don't even know that the A through D requirements exist. They just think, oh, I'm just going to go to community college. And this is for, for everybody, really. And in order to you know make that go a little bit more attainable for everybody, if we were to just let students know by you know maybe having the counselors talk to the students from an early on, let them know that college is an option just despite of their background. Because um, for me as a as a Latina, I was lucky enough to be in to have a program and you know I had the right teachers to push me. But that's kind of a special situation because not everybody is as fortunate as I am. So if you guys were able to maybe find a, a way to just bring awareness to the students, that would definitely help the Latino population. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, another speaker, um, Christian Kiros. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I am also from, I'm a third year at Cal State Long Beach. I'm also here doing a uh, part of presentation for my Ch uh, Chicano studies class. Um, one of the things that I was looking up at the educational data, uh, the data uh, partnership website was that um, during um, the class of 2009 that only 34% um, of students were eligible um, to apply um, to Cal State or UC. Um, and one of the um, solutions I had brought up are suggest that more <coughs> college preparatory um, programs 
starting from something like freshman year, something like the Adams program, but more towards um, more um, other ethnicities such as Latino, um, because studies show that um, through uh, preparatory programs that um, students are more informed about um, financial aid and college in general, and they're able to see, um, for example, they're able to see everything um, that maybe they're, they're able to know a little bit better about college rather than just what they learn from TV or anything that have mentors there. And I think by having them start out at, at a much younger age of high school rather than later in high school would help um, see a much higher percentage of students who are eligible to uh, graduate, being eligible to go to a Cal State or UC. Thank you. We have two cards uh, with the topic of special ed. Do you want to speak when we have our public hearing on our uh, plan and budget? Correct. Okay. Next item on the agenda would be the uh, approval of our uh, minutes. We've all received copies of that. Are there any uh, corrections or revisions that you guys would like to make? And then the uh, minutes are approved as submitted. Okay, now we're at the uh, public hearing. We'll open that. This is a public hearing pursuant to Education Code 56205B. It's our special education annual service plan and annual budget plan. Uh, it's been available for the public uh, to inspect uh, from November 14th to uh, December 6th of this year and uh, been in our Office of Special Education. At this time, I'd like to uh, invite uh, Rita Loof to uh, come and make some comments on the uh, agenda item. Thank you. 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 Thank you.